First at four, Governor Whitmer's urging Michiganders to not let their guard down. Coming up, the new program said to keep the most vulnerable safe. A domestic dispute leaves one man shot to death on Detroit's west side, who police say pulled the trigger. Andrew. And Karen, we're looking at some showers and thunderstorms this afternoon. Any more severe weather on the way for later today or this weekend? I've got the answer coming up in your weather forecast first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at 4, Governor Whitmer offered a new update on the state's battle against the coronavirus, and you'll hear from her in a second. But first, here's a snapshot of where things stand on this Friday afternoon. 748 new cases of the virus have been reported in the last 24 hours. There's a total of over 91,000 cases across the state. The death toll from the virus currently sits at 6,300 with 11 lives lost in the last day. Now, in a new partnership, Governor Whitmer announced a program aimed at handing out free masks to protect those most vulnerable from corona. Kimberly Gill in the newsroom with the very latest. And Kim, today's announcement is just another step in the state's effort to keep the cases from surging. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. Yes, the state will partner with FEMA and Ford Motor Company to distribute 4 million masks to low income residents, seniors, schools and homeless shelters. Meanwhile, health officials say cases remain stable and are starting to plateau across the state. That's despite yesterday's highest day of cases since May 14th with 1,121 new cases. Governor Whitmer says she's cautiously optimistic on the state's trend. During the briefing, the topic of schools slowly took center stage. The governor says more work needs to be done. After a rise in COVID cases in July and early August, our case numbers have begun to plateau. So we're not out of the woods and this crisis is far from over, but we appear to have stopped the, the incline, but we're now plateaued and we want to see that become a decline. To get through this and to ensure the safety of our kids, educators and support staff this fall, everyone's got to continue to do their part. State top health state officials. Let me start at that again. I'm sorry. The state's top health official. There we go. Dr. John A. Caldoun says a handful of regions are seeing a spike in cases. The city of Detroit is seeing 26 cases per million per day. Well, the rest of Wayne, Monroe and Oakland counties are seeing 40 cases per million per day. Macomb County has the highest growth in the region, seeing 82 cases per million per day with a 7.4% positive test rate. Dr. Caldoun again urged residents to continue wearing masks and practicing social distancing. But we all simply have to focus on the things that we can control. We can all wear a mask. We can all wash our hands. We can keep our distance from others. We can pick up our phones if someone from the health department calls, and we can make sure our families are up to date on their vaccinations. So please do these simple things. If we all do this, we will see COVID-19 cases to continue to decline and we will beat this virus. Dr. Caldoun also recommended superintendents require students returning to in-person learning to wear face masks. It's a situation that we will, of course, continue to monitor. We'll have more tonight when you join us for Local 4 News at 5 and 6. Until then, Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right. Always appreciate it. Thank sure. you, Kim. The U.S. borders with Canada and Mexico will remain closed to non-essential travel for another month until September 21st. Officials extended a ban on non-essential travel at land borders for another 30 days as several states struggled to contain the outbreak. Now, the border closures were announced on March 18th and then were extended every month. Since then, essential workers like healthcare professionals, airline crews and truck drivers are still permitted to cross. The Detroit Federation of Teachers says it will hold a strike vote next week. The union says it has safety concerns with the Detroit Public Schools Community District's reopening plan and that its demands have been ignored. DPSCD is offering face-to-face, -face, virtual or hybrid learning to students this year. Meantime, on ClickOnDetroit.com, we've got a full list of local school districts' plans. So you can take a look at that. You'll find it on the Return to School page. The flurry of activity you're noticing at various school district offices is because the clock is running out to get their back to school plans submitted to the state, which must happen at the close of business today. But there is a catch 22, even though most of the plans are submitted, as Paula Tubman reports, they are far from complete. 
Today is D-Day for school districts as their back-to-school plans are due in Lansing, and never before has the job of a superintendent and a district team been more daunting, blindly putting together school plans and budgets with little foundation to do so. It feels very backwards, Paul. Uh, months ago, we, we asked for, we needed to know what our parameters were going to be. We needed to know about student enrollment counts. We needed to know about seat time expectations. In terms of a bookkeeping ledger, a student is money. It's called the per pupil amount. And in 2019-2020, that amount was $12,284 per pupil in Birmingham. In Southfield, the number is $11,333 per pupil. But the average amount of per pupil funding for the majority of Michigan schools is $8,111 per student. For Armada, Lapeer, Addison, Detroit schools get a few dollars more at $8,142 per pupil. Here's the point. It means that on student count day, with that child's rear end in a classroom seat, the district gets that amount of money per child. Now, the districts with virtual options, they still don't know if lawmakers will allow the flexibility to count those students who will not have rear ends physically in those chairs. Also because many districts have shortened their day, it means there needs to be a waiver or an accommodation for fewer than the current requisite 1,098 hours of learning. Last night during our virtual town hall meeting with decision makers, Representative Pamela Hornberger of the 32nd District, who also chairs the Education Committee, acknowledged that Lansing is aware that superintendents are still waiting for guidance this close to the start of school. All of us know when school starts and what goes into the beginning of the school year. I, I mean, I, I did it for 23 years, and I did it as a school board member for six years. This, this isn't something that blindsided us. This should have been put in place a long time ago. But also said that until Lansing hears from the federal government on funding, their hands are tied. What I would say to Lansing is uh, we can't wait for the federal government. Lansing has to prove that they're better than, than, than the federal government. Uh, if, if we're waiting for, for the stimulus, uh, the next round of stimulus and the rescue from the federal government, I think we're going to be waiting a long time. We don't have that kind of time to wait. So I, I would implore Lansing uh, to be better than that. Yeah, okay, so for some school districts, for the start of school, you can count the numbers of days away by your fingers, and they still have all of this uncertainty. One superintendent actually sent me a text message and said, the struggle is real, guys. It really is, Paul. I know at my dinner table last night, my kids were asking questions, and that's what's so frustrating. When it all comes down to it, it's the kids that are so worried about this in terms of trying to find some answers. Well, kids and parents, parents can't even plan because they don't even know if their district's plans right. are actually even going to be accepted by Lansing. It's, it, it, it's almost untenable. It really is. All right. Paula, we appreciate all of the work that you've done this week and all of these education stories informing us, and we know you'll stay on top of it. Thanks. All right, let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk about the forecast. It's Friday, knocking on the door of the weekend. Let's bring in Andrew. I know there's storms uh, in our future, so how serious are we talking about, Andrew? Well, Karen, we are talking about more heavy downpours and thunder and lightning during the course of the weekend. Not all weekend long, not a complete washout, but not unlike what we've seen this afternoon. Showers and thunderstorms blossoming here and there. Now, we did have one severe case over in northwestern Washtenaw County. That severe thunderstorm warning was allowed to expire over a half hour ago at 3.30. You still have heavy downpours out toward Jackson, southeastern Jackson County, the western fringe of Livingston County with some lightning developing there. Elsewhere in southeast Michigan, the showers and storms that developed have now started to fade away. Doesn't mean we're out of the woods just yet. There's still the possibility of a scattered shower or two before this, e this afternoon and this evening are over. That being said, we still have some sunshine coming down. It is still warm. If it's not raining where you are, we're looking at temperatures easily in the middle and upper 80s. A shower at last report over at Metro Airport with 82 degrees currently. 80s in your neighborhood as well. Once again, with 81 for our friends in Pontiac, 85 where it's more sunny over in Monroe. We'll talk about that possibility of showers into this evening and later on tonight. And we'll talk about the possibility of those showers. And we still need the rain this weekend in just minutes. All right. Look forward to it. Thank you, Andrew. Well, we are learning more about a 14-year-old boy shooting and killing a man on Detroit's west side. This happened overnight. Now take a look at the map. This is where it happened on Steel Street near 8 Mile. A 14-year-old boy told police 
He shot a 38-year-old man to protect his mother. Police believe the man was beating that woman. When medics got to that house, they found the man shot dead in the driveway. The mother was found bleeding. Police say the 14-year-old boy was taken in for questioning. Palestinians on the West Bank woke up this morning to learn more about a diplomatic development that may affect their future. Israel has announced it will establish diplomatic relations with the United Arab Emirates, with the UAE joining Egypt and Jordan as the only Arab nations with diplomatic ties to Israel. Now, Israel benefits with wider recognition in the Arab world. It's also viewed as a diplomatic triumph for the Trump administration. While the agreement will have Israel hold off on annexing territories in the West Bank, Palestinian leaders say the UAE has stabbed Palestinians in the back. Let's talk politics. Joe Biden and Senator Kamala Harris made the Democratic ticket official today. They each signed paperwork that will qualify them as the Democratic candidates on ballots in all 50 states. Now, of course, they'll become the official nominees at the party's convention next week. Biden and Harris each began by signing ballot documents for their prospective home states. The signing caps their first week as a ticket. At his coronavirus briefing, the president talks about funding for the Postal Service as he requests his own absentee ballot. Now, the president says he would accept $25 billion in funding for the Postal Service if Democrats agree to stimulus funding. Now, it comes as he and his wife Melania have requested absentee ballots for the upcoming Florida primary. White House spokesperson explained the president's request, saying the president supports absentee voting, not universal mail-in voting, which contains several safeguards that prevent fraud and abuse. Still to come, here first at four, as millions of families know, working from home and parenting little ones at the same time, oh, it is a challenge. Find out what one company is doing to help ease the process. Plus, a look at stories making headlines across America, including Crews battling a major wildfire in California. But first, protesters clashed with police overnight in the nation's capital. The only thing that makes me feel good is that I